going on, senores and senores? It is your boy, El Barcelo Filionator of all things sports and culture here in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. Look, let's not get it twisted, although it might seem like I'm a little upbeat. I'm not. I just watched the Eagles play the Washington football team, the Washington racial slurs, whatever you want to call them in 2020. And we lost to them. I didn't, I really did not expect to be sitting here in front or standing in here in front of this camera telling you guys that the Eagles lost the first game to Washington. This is a team that we constantly beat. There was that one instance where, you know, Chip Kelly to the beginning of Doug Peterson, we were losing to the Redskins and we had a little losing streak, but for the most part, we own Washington. And then there's, this team is not special whatsoever. Like I, I've talked about it before with Washington. Like this isn't, un, this isn't a team that's going to, they, they don't do anything special. They do, however, play good defense is what we saw today. They have a good defense on their hands. That front line is nasty. All those first round picks are, all those draft top draft picks are paying off for Washington, but the offense is nothing crazy. And it, the defense did a solid job here in this game, getting, getting the job done. However, we're going to talk about it in a second. We literally, I'm going to put it, put it straight up to you guys, flat out. We shot ourselves in the foot here in this game today. Today was mental. Today was 80% a mental game that we lost we lost the game ourselves we did that to ourselves there we, we didn't like talent um maybe it's hurting it maybe in certain spots we do like talent but overall there's this team has more talent than what washington just dis demonstrated on this day on the sunday afternoon and uh we're gonna make some adjustments before we get started though guys diving into this game do not forget to hit that like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell button for notifications as well as sharing this video and the channel to help continue the growth of your favorite barcelo i promise you guys i'm going to be putting in some more t uh, content in here on youtube this week this is the start of it talking about the eagles literally the game just ended an hour ago so uh we're going to talk about this game and bef and also do not forget that tomorrow i will be at tonic uh see it's, i think it's a bar and grill out in wilmington delaware for the birds breakdown hosted by the one and only mr philly sports guy the crazy guy had the eagles games game painted yes i will be with him this 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 guy this columbian guy over here is going to be linking up with philly sports guy i think we have a couple other people coming in too so you don't want to miss it talking all things birds uh elaborate more on what i'm about to talk about right now but again final score the eagles losing to the washington football team 27 to 17 and this truly and honestly was a tale of two halves we saw the eagles for most of the first half for at least up until 40 seconds left in the first in the first half the eagles were winning 17 and nothing and then um a minute 37 left in the first half carson once who was trying to get the ball to jalen rigger got the ball intercepted by morrow of the washington football team and that that, that play right there Pretty much changed the direction where this game was going. The Eagles had the momentum. It looked like we were really going to go up. We were going to win this game 40 to, to 17. It looked like it was going to be another routing of the Washington football team. Because the, the Eagles looked good. Everything was clicking. Um, even Carson got some balls downfield. Um, I think he got one to Deshaun, if I'm not mistaken. But he definitely got one to Jalen Rager for, for a nice 55-yard uh, gain. And that's really showed us what Jalen Rager was. And that is why I wanted to draft him over Justin Jefferson. I have to see what Justin Jefferson did against Green Bay, but still it was a solid outing for Jalen Rager. And also remember, Jalen wasn't even going to play in this game. He was still hurt. He still played a nice play, only one catch, but it's still something you can build upon as a rookie. Um, but the uh, the other story in the first half was the chemistry that Carson was building with the tight ends. We know that Carson loves throwing to his tight ends, but they were absolutely uh, killing it in the first half. I think Dallas Goddard ended the game with eight catches in the touchdown. That was a nice touchdown pass as well, him going deep, Carson throwing it at the in the right spot on that far shoulder, uh, getting, getting it away from the safeties. That was a great throw. And, uh, yeah, he, finished, he, had a, he had the best game out of any receiver for the Eagles. Zacharis had three, catch, uh, three catches for a touchdown as well. He started the scoring for the Eagles, but Zach did have a couple drops in the second half that was crucial. Dallas did too, but I don't know. I I, I feel like, and I'm and this is just could be me speculating. I you know I probably shouldn't, but it's just what I see on the field. Zach 
it looked like something was on Zach's mind. And then we all know that Zach's been going through contract dis discussions with the Eagles. And from my understanding, from what I'm hearing, is not looking pretty between the Eagles and Zach Ertz on both sides. Um, so I don't know. If, I don't again. Don't want to speculate, but this is just observations of myself, especially in the second half. Things when things weren't going right. Um, I just saw a look of defeat a little bit on the Eagles, and again, this is just the first game, but uh, it, that's definitely something you don't want to see, whether it's the first or the last game, um, so I will get to that in a second, but uh, second half, again, you know, only so much the defense could do. The defense did their part for most of the game. They got, an, they got a bunch of stops, but the Eagles offense stalled, and one of the main reasons for their stalling was... The offensive line, an uh, offensive line that we all knew going into this game was going to be hampered. We lost a lot of players, especially Brandon Brooks um, out for this game. Or, I'm sorry, out for this season. We know we we're not going to get him for the rest of the year. That's crucial seeing Matt Pr uh, Pryor. Or, sorry, we had Hug Hugby? Hugby, I forget his name, the rook, the uh, the draft pick from last season. Um, he got the start at the guard. Uh, we saw Jason Peters, of course, you know, replacing Andre Dillard, which we knew we know about that saga that was going on all season long with that. It was it was freaking ridiculous. Uh, but man, Jason Peters, whew, I have a lot to say, but we will get to that in a second. Um, no Lane Johnson in this game as well. He had a, picked up an injury this week, and he it was he was questionable leading up to game day. But he was ruled out, which, you know, he left us in a bad spot. We put in Driscoll, who also got hurt. We saw um, Mylotta get in there as well. So it, it's it's just a big mess going on in the offensive line. And, again, it's the same story of the past couple years. It's the injuries. We constantly getting bitten by this freaking injury bug. And it's I don't, I don't understand. I really don't understand how in Philadelphia – the the water or the water in this in this city can make some good bread, you know. The, 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 yes, the water has a lot to do with the bread. It's, it tastes so good in this area, but the water in this area also gets all our star athletes injured. So, um, it's it, this truly was the story of the game. The offensive line, the fact that the offensive line kind of kind of diminished what the Eagles wanted to do offensively and. Most of the time, if if the if you know the pass block is not working, maybe the run you go go to the run game, leave, you know, leave off some pressure. The offensive line can control the game from from running the ball, but we couldn't even get anything running the ball. Um, no Miles Sanders, as you guys know, he was out in this game. We saw Corey Clement and um, Boston Scott get some of the carries. Boston Scott carried most of the uh, the load for the for the backs. He did get hurt in this game, but he did end up with 35 yards. Corey ended up with 19 yards. Overall, we had 57 yards as a unit. That is not good whatsoever either. And listen, I I told you guys, and I've said it so many times, I've beaten this drum. I am not a proponent of having one guy as your running back. It's 2020. I, it's been shown so many times. We even proved it that a running back by committee works the best. And having a power back really really and i'm being honest guys would have helped in this game i believe that some of the runs that we couldn't get really anything on a power back could have gotten an extra one or two yards a guy like jordan howard a guy like legarrett blunt really would be beneficial in this in this offense right now at this moment and i don't know where you're gonna find one of those guys right now because you know we're, we're in this season right now and um we, we would have had one by now although i'm hearing elijah holyfield could possibly be that but we will see but Man, this offense it, it's 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 tough because it's it's weird because it's not like you know they are not performing to their you know the way they should be it's just the fact of the matter is is that we're having injuries yet again and it's the same story we've seen this plenty of times the past couple of years and how how do you how do you replace lane johnson um how do you replace brandon brooks and how do you replace andre dillard well with the dillard front Jason Peters, as we all know, that was a mess with um, Jason Peters and, you know, getting sliding back over to the left tackle position after the Dillard injury and flat out. He sucked. I'm going to put it flat out. And I lo and listen, I love Jason Peters. I don't forget what he's done for this franchise, but he was absolutely terrible in this game. He looks old. He looks like he does not belong at, at, at that left tackle position. And I'm not kidding, guys. He did not play good whatsoever. I saw him giving up on a couple of opportunities on a couple of blocks. Now I'm not I'm not sure if that's just him being complacent, like I don't want to get hurt, I got paid, or that's just him, you know, being old and he can't keep up. So that that's definitely and truly it was concerning to see him playing the way he did uh throughout the game. 
and it, I don't, hopefully we can find a way to get, you know, some health back and get maybe some of these offensive linemen can gain, can get a little bit better. But if this offensive line is going to play like this, like, I, I don't know how we are going to survive this year. We already know that Carson Wentz is an injury liability, to say the least. Can Carson can he make can he make something with this the way this offensive line is structured right now? I don't know. Lane Johnson, he should be back next week. If he does come back, that would be really big to see if him coming back. Um that would ease up some pressure, but like the whole right side, like you put in an uh, you put an unexperienced right side for your starting quarterback. Oh, it was it was absolutely rough. Um, Alshon Jeffrey, maybe he... I don't know when he's coming back, to be honest with you guys. It's such a weird situation as well. But the receiving core... I, I will say this. John Hightower. Weiss heard so many great stuff leading up to this game. He's making nice catches. He's making people look crazy out here. Um, he looked like a rookie. Flat out looked like a rookie. And uh, uh, that's bound to happen. You know, some rookies, you know, it's, it's a it's a tough spot. It's your first ever NFL game. But, uh, yeah, he looked like a rookie, and that's that's unfortunate. Um, but why, why did J.J. – I heard a lot of good things about J.J. in camp as well, and he, I, he didn't even get a catch in this game. He didn't even get one single catch in this game. Uh, Greg Ward did play well. He did have his five catches, so that was good to see. But, again, this offense – Carson Wentz without a without a healthy offensive line, without a running game to alleviate some pressure. You saw the Eagles trying to go deep because it was working a couple of times, but you can't you can't you can't just you know keep going to that. It that's that's something. If if you were able to run the ball, that would bring up the safeties, and that allows your fast receivers to just burn those safeties in those corners that the Redskins. Or sorry, the, I, I can't be saying that. I cannot be saying that. The Washington Football Team. They got burned, and they would have burned. They would have gotten burned. So, uh, it's just a it's just a rough game. And next up for the Eagles, they have to face off against the LA Rams. We will be home at the link, and it will be a one o'clock game. Um, but I mean, if we can't now, granted, this defensive line for Washington is pretty good, and they are going to be really good this year. Uh, Chase Young is as advertised. Ryan Kerrigan always, always, always is killing us. Um, uh, it's 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 going to be tough going up against this LA Rams defensive line. It's still pretty solid, but uh, we will see, man. This is this is a frustrating loss. You know, the the year that we've been having with the COVID pandemic, uh, systemic racism in this freaking country. Uh, not sure if we would have sports, and then we get our sports, and then you just look at it at a Philly, at, you know, aspect. You know, the Union losing in the semifinals of the MLS is back tournament after looking so good. The Sixers. Hoaxing all Sixers fans and getting embarrassed in the first round to the Celtics. The Flyers losing to a team that they were honestly better than. The Phillies look okay, even though they're they're about to lose this series against the Marlins, a crucial series. And you just have the Eagles here, and you just want them to just put a smile on your face, bring back the good vibes that the Eagles always have been giving us the past couple years under Doug Peterson. And not only do you lose, but you lose a game that you are clearly the better team. You had the lead in the first half. You had the lead for most of the game. And then the almighty, the all-important quarter of pro football, of football in general, you blow it. <laughs> that's that's Sunday in, a, Sunday in a nutshell. Well, guys, look, it's still, even though this is upsetting, even though this sucks, it's still a long season. And if... These, this Doug Peterson Eagles team has taught you anything over the past couple of years. They show up in the season fourth quarter. And what I mean by that, in the last couple of weeks, they just have to get themselves in that spot so that we can win in this in the important fourth quarter, which is the final stretch of the NFL season. We will see what happens. Um, I'm, I will be watching that Rams game tonight against the Cowboys. Hopefully they can get the win. Uh, I'm going to finish watching the Phillies. Uh, hopefully they can somehow come back against the Marlins. I think it's four nothing right now, of course. And, if, and I'm also going to finish watching the Saints and Bucks game because it's pretty damn good. And watching Tom Brady in a different uniform is pretty damn weird. But ladies and gentlemen, in the comments below, let's keep the conversation going. Let us talk vents. Let us vent together. 
Let's, it is healthy to talk it out. And then we move on. Let, let's talk about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you watch up to this point, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button for notifications, as well as sharing this video and this channel to help your favorite Barcelo grow. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I go by the name of Ed Barcelo Feline. I'm telling you guys, go birds. We'll be, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. I promise.